Hey guys, what's up? Back at it again. This is the final part of the Rod Locker build. That's right, final guys. I originally said it was gonna be three parts, but I took a second look and was able to make the second part a combination of part two and three without losing a lot of detail. So the integrity of this video is intact, guys. Of course, part two picks up right where part one ended. So if you haven't seen part one of the Rod Locker build, hit that link at the top of the screen right now, check that out and then get back to this video. In this video guys, we'll actually do the framing of the rod locker. Also, I'll show you how to prep rod tubes, flare those tubes out so it has a really nice look. I'll also show you how I did the carpeting and lastly, get those dope rod grommets in to hold those rod perfectly in place. As always guys, click the link in the description below for the full playlist. If you wanna see this thing from start to finish, Click that link below. Let's get into it, guys. I am gonna try to get the uh, ends of the tubes to flare out a bit. As you can see that, push it right out. Good, coming along. sand off all the rough edges. Another thing guys I learned as I was going, not to heat down on the pipe, just heat the edges, all right? Because if you heat down on this part of the pipe, as you're pushing, this part will start to buckle and expand out. And you don't want that to happen because then it may not fit in the rod hole and all that stuff. So just heat the edge, maybe a quarter of an inch from the top. You can see where it's brown. Hopefully you guys can see that. Where it's brown right there is where I heated it. Hopefully you can see that. The rod tubes are all ready. We're gonna start framing out the actual locker. This is coming together very well. All right guys, so we got one railing up, went with one eighth thick angled aluminum for the rod locker for the top, only because I will not have any support brackets underneath, so I wanna go with a stronger piece since this will be by itself. It won't be load bearing, but I could see me or my brother stepping on this at any given moment, bringing in a five pounder. So went with one eighth here. This is one sixteenth at the bottom, bottom railing. This is where the wall will come up, brackets on top, okay? What I had to do with this one was basically cut it for the rod locker, the rod tube. I don't know if you guys can get a better shot at this. It's gonna be something like that. All right guys, I put a bunch of rivets in there. Hopefully that holds up. Eventually all this will be carpeted. I'll cover up these holes. In the end, it'll look good. Just a rough look right now. The idea behind this rod locker is pretty simple. Use as least amount of space as possible. Rod tubes will be on that side in the bench. As you see, I've gotten all the holes drilled out. There'll be a wall here. There'll be a wall on this side as well. And then I'm going to actually drill. Just thought of that. I'll actually drill into the rear bench uh, to install rod grommets to hold the rods in place. I think this is gonna work out pretty sweet. For the walls, I decided to go with aluminum walls, 0 0.025 aluminum sheet for that. So it's very thin, very light. I'm gonna have it here and on this side and then half inch plywood on the top. Trying to decide whether I'm gonna just carpet the rod locker or use some type of vinyl covering. I think, and I said think, I'm gonna carpet it as of right now. I'll probably put a couple support beams along the 116 side over here, especially with the sidewall being 0 0.05, 0.25 aluminum. It's pretty thin stuff, um, but very lightweight. That's what we want. All 
All right, guys, we're gonna do the cross beam a little bit different. This is the first time I'm actually going to mount the angle right on the bench. Normally, I've done little uh, beams here in each corner. You can see this time we're going straight across the bench. I drew a line where the rivets need to go, so I'm gonna rivet this out and then mark a couple holes, one hole on each side, and then mount it and then drill the rest of the holes, get this in there. guys hopefully you can hear me the way I'm doing the crossbars in order for it to be completely flush on the frame meaning one side doesn't overlap the other is I notch it out so it fits in there snug and everything is level so as you can see I notched out this way and I notched out that way all right I'm trying to do this with one hand it fits in there just like that. That way it's flat, it's even, and the hatches will be flush. All right, so that's the idea there. It fits in there just like that. All right, so I know my rivets need to be on the inside. The reason why I have this marked is because where I'm attaching it, I have rivets already down here on the post that's already in the frame, all right? So I have to go within this area with four rivets. This side's gonna be a little challenging. This side, I got all of this space to do rivets because the post rivets are further down. Perfecto mundo. All right guys, this is done. Very strong. That's all I can say. All right guys, I just finished doing the framing. I was on the other side of the boat and noticed a huge mistake. Uh, this is not completely level and I can see it from, when I'm standing on the other side of the boat, I can definitely see it. So as you can see, you guys take a look right there. You can see that my leveler is off. It needs to come up about right there. So that's about maybe an eighth of an inch, maybe a little bit more. Now I typically wouldn't worry about this, but once I put the deck on the frame, the wood is not gonna fit properly. And then I may have hatch issues with the hatch door closing. Not too happy about that. And I probably will have to fix it. Well, it won't be the first mistake. And well, hopefully it's the last. Let's go ahead and do it now, might as well. Drill these out and reset. All right. There you have it guys, all drilled out. Look at all these holes. Don't, these are what you call mistakes. Got two rivets in. Very ugly, but that's gonna be on the inside. Not gonna worry about it. I'd rather this be done right than be pretty. All right, that's very even. Very happy about that. All right, so, was able to get it fixed pretty quickly. A lot quicker for you guys than me, but it's fixed. All of this will be carpeted, so I'm not worried about this. I'll try to dress this up a little bit if I have to, but it's gonna look great when it's done. All right, guys, so I got my template up for the rear of the rod locker. These are gonna be for the rod grommets. Made a new template the same way I did the first one for the front of the rod locker. This time I went with smaller holes. The front of the rod locker has two inch holes and I went with one and three quarter inch holes for the rear for the rod grommets. So here's one of the rod grommets. The reason why I went with a smaller hole for the rear is because with the two inch hole, trying to screw the screws in for the grommet, there was barely any clearance or any surface for me to be able to screw these into. Downsize the size of my hole, giving me much more space as you can see, 
to screw in these grommets. One of the things I realized with doing a rod locker is when you're putting the rods inside the locker, you need space for the reels. And that sounds very elementary, but until I started playing around with it, I realized just how much space a reel takes up in a rod locker. Now I'm gonna hole up the hole saw up to each hole and draw my center holes and then I'm ready to drill. The center hole will be the inside hole of the hole saw. Okay guys, we got all of the holes drilled out. It looks really good. So right off the back, I see that the foam inside the bench doesn't go all the way through like the front bench. So right here it's missing, missing, missing some here. So my plan is to insert PVC tubing inside each hole, maybe about three, four inches deep, uh, just to keep the rods even more secure and keep foam off of the rods as I use the rod locker. You can see this yellow foam right here. Uh, the inserts will keep the rods clean. Next step is to go ahead and drill out the foam. I'm gonna drill it out as far as this goes. I think this goes about two plus inches deep. So I'm just gonna drill into the foam, drill out that foam, and then insert tubes where the hole is, all right? All right, so we'll get to cutting the tube and get the tubes in there. Oh, that's actually perfect. Stops right here at the opening as well. All right, guys, so we are done getting all the tubes in. The duct tape worked really well to keep them sturdy inside the holes. So right now I've got the back of the rod done. Tubes are ready to go in the front. But before we do that, we're gonna go ahead and carpet this area, both front and back. All right, guys, right here, I just, luckily I have some leftover carpet from creating the bunks and carpeting those for the trailer for the Bass Raider. I actually have a lot left over, so somebody miscalculated how much they needed to buy. But it's gonna work out to my advantage. I'm gonna use this carpet, and this is carpet I got from Home Depot. Nothing special, everyone's used it before, it's got a backing to it. I'm not even sure if this is completely rubber. I don't think it is, but my plan is to use this for inside of the rod locker, and I think this will do just fine for that. So with this carpet being a cheaper carpet, you don't wanna have it globbed on here too much because it will seep through the carpet and that's a look you don't wanna have. So I'm just trying to spread it evenly to try to prevent that from happening. All right guys, so we got both sides of the rod locker done. Everything is on flush. So next we'll cut the holes get the rod grommets in for the rear. We'll cut the holes, get the tubes pushed through here, secure the tubes on the other side. I am gonna put flooring in here, of course, and then put panel on the side. And then I'll put this panel side on last, because I actually need to trace out the hatch before I put the panel on this side of the rod locker. Originally, I had uh, some angled aluminum on the inside. I'm changing it out to just flat bars because by having the angled aluminum in here, I lost an inch and a half worth of space in the rod locker. I tested it out by putting rods in here and that inch and a half is way too important. I need that space. So I took out the angled aluminum. I'm just gonna go with some flat bars, stick them in here. And here, I may add one or two others as well. And basically what that will do is support the top of the rod locker in case we stand on it or sit on it or something like that. Um, and it'll also support the side panel. Okay, so that's the idea behind making that change.
All right, so what you saw me doing right there was just testing the strength of the aluminum side panel to see if by pushing on it, leaning on it, would it bow in to the rod locker. And what I saw was it was bowing in on the corners, on the ends of the rod locker. So I'm gonna go ahead and put two more pieces, one on each end, and that should secure it up pretty good. So I'm just gonna add a piece there, add a piece there. From here, let's go ahead and get the holes cut out. Finally, let's get the rod tubes in there. Ah, that looks great. Oh my gosh, that looks great. So I was just checking to make sure that I didn't cut out too much of the carpet versus cutting out too little. Looks like I hit it right on the first go. This thing is starting to look amazing. All right guys, everything is looking excellent. Very happy with it. Right now it looks like I have a lot of space over here, but realize a lot of this is gonna be cut off about right here with the uh, side panel for the rod locker. Just gonna show you really quick on the other side what I'm doing right here. It's putting these clamps on the back of the rods. That way they don't slide back out that way. Uh, just extra precaution as I'm using the boat, I'd hate for it to slowly making its way and then I'm constantly pushing it back in. Just these right here, just putting one on each rod. We'll get this last one on and we'll be done with the front. So the idea in the back is to go ahead and do the same thing we did in the front. Cut out all the holes, trim away some of the carpet, install these rod grommets in. These will hold the back end of the rods in place. Do pilot holes, four pilot holes for each rod grommet. I got these from Boat Outfitters. I'll leave a link in the description below. These are excellent. I saw Michael Lopez using them from Tiny Boat Nation and it literally holds the rod in place without twisting. The rod doesn't like fall to the side or anything. It holds it and the reel in place. So hopefully it does the same for me. So guys, it's just really important to make sure you get the center hole right. I had to move this one over a little bit because it was off. So if one's off, it kind of throws off the rest. And it's not gonna be perfect, but as long as it's functional and it's solid and secure, I'm good to go. Here are the screws I'm using, number eight, stainless steel screws from Home Depot, eight by three quarters inch. I would rather use half inch, but I just don't have any, so. I started with the number sixes, but it just didn't seem to quite have the grip I wanted it to. So going with number eight. There you have it guys. I am super excited about how this thing is turning out. Hope you guys enjoyed that. Coming up next guys for this series is framing the rear deck. Watch and see how I overcame one of the biggest challenges of this build. And it's really cool how that came out, framed the entire rear deck with 1 16th ounce, the lightest build of the boat. As always guys, don't forget to hit that subscribe button. Leave us a like if you enjoyed the video or got something out of it. And as always guys, stay safe out there. We'll see you on the next video. Woo!